tutorial we're going to look at the vector scope and try and understand exactly what we're seeing when we see the vector scope. Now the vector scope actually deals with color, chrominance information. It doesn't deal with brightness, it deals with chrominance, how strong a color is. And it gives us safe points to aim for. If we go beyond those points we're into illegal colors as they're referred to or non-broadcast safe. So you find the vector scope in the same way you find all the rest of them through the panel menu go to the panel menu and then go to the vector scope, choose the vector scope and it is a circle and it's exactly the same as a color wheel. Now I'm going to apply an effect to this piece of footage just to demonstrate the color wheel to you and this effect is called the fast color corrector and we'll be using that a bit later on so I'm in my color workspace if you remember we went to Windows workspace and I'm in my color correction workspace this is why it looks like it does and I'm going to go to the effects and I've already typed in fast up here if you can't see it you can X that off and just type in here fast and then you've got fast color corrector under the color correction section if your footage is selected you can just double click it but actually I've got the wrong piece selected so the other way of doing it is just to grab it and drop it on the piece of footage you want to drop it on and let go and then the effects controls panel has got it here now yours may look like that this is just an area for looking at keyframes for when we animate items. So if you want to see your keyframes, you've got this little area open. But if you don't need to see keyframes because you're not animating it, you're just setting a property, i.e. the property you are changing, but you're not going to have it change over time. You are just changing it. Then you don't need this section open. But if you are going to make it change over time and you're going to create keyframes, then you do want this section open. But it's undone with the arrow and opened with that arrow okay so it's now opened and this is the fast color corrector I'm showing you because this is a color wheel now we've got red over here we've got blue and we've got cyan and we've got green and yellows and you can see over here in the vector scope I'm just gonna make this a lot bigger so we can see it a lot closer side by side that it says R here and that's referring to red and then yellow over here green down here cyan down here blue over here and then magenta over here so what we see in our vector scope is also the same as we would see in a color wheel and it's showing us how strong the color is for the item that we're looking at so we can clearly see that there's a reasonable amount of red in this shot probably to do with his the light showing through his ear over here and bits and pieces um, but all the rest of the colors are relatively muted but we've also got these little target areas. We've got a square brackets with a little target area in the middle. Now these target areas are telling us what are safe. And the reason there's two of them is because there are two different ways of looking at this. Either with a 75% which is standard, which means that this box in the outer one and the target in the middle equals 75% of the maximum chrominance or the maximum color that a color can go to. Okay, I'll say that again. So this box represents 75% of the maximum any color can go to. There is also a drop down that says 100. And when you go to 100, notice this item shrunk. Now this outer box represents 100% of the color. And the inner box represents 75% of the color. And for broadcast, what we are aiming for is 75%. We don't want any colors to go beyond the 75% level. So if I take this back to 75%, I now know the outer box is referring to 75%. So I want no colors to go beyond these outer boxes. And you'll see that these are not always balanced. This one's further out than this one over here, for instance. That's just because of the way that color works and the way broadcast systems work. Even so, for blue over here, we don't want to go beyond this box. So it's telling us about the color that's in the shot that we're actually looking at and it's giving us an indication if there are any problems. But also this a vector scope is a really great way of being able to know how to change colors or see how we are affecting colors. Now for instance this line just here is often referred to as the skin tone line and it is the color of blood pumping through your skin doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter what your ethnic background, blood is always the same color and this line here represents that color. So if you can isolate the skin tones of a person you're looking at 
and then change the color so that it is actually on this line you will be changing the skin tones to the correct color now how do I actually be able to say in this particular one have a look at the skin tones of this man well I could apply an effect which would help me to be able to isolate just the bits that I want to look at and that effect or the one I'm going to use is called a garbage mat now we can use garbage mats for many things as we'll see when we get into keying later on but the garbage mat will allow me just to select the area that's important so say I want to look at this cheek here or maybe this cheek over here the way I can do it is simply go to effects and it's called a four point garbage mat so I'm gonna get rid of what's in here and type the word not the number the word for F O U R and before I finished it you see I've got keying so video effects keying four point garbage mat and I can drag that and if I could see the video there it is I can drag that and make sure it's actually gone onto the video itself now I can open up my effects controls and I can just twirl up the color corrector for now we'll be doing a lot more of that later and you'll see we've got four point garbage mat click on the word and then notice over here in the program monitor that I've actually got four little anger points that I can play with and I can pull those down so that they would look at the area of most interest to me which is obviously the skin on his cheek and I can pull those all across and when we have a look we can see down here in the vector scope that that skin tone is actually pretty close to the skin tone line however we can change it if we want to make it even closer or actually on that line alternatively we could actually have a look at a different part of his body so let's have a look at the let's cheek over on this side which is slightly better lit or brighter anyway and have a little look and that's absolutely on the skin tone line so we can actually tell this is a fairly well shot piece of footage we've got a really good indication that the skin tone line is bang on and once you've sorted it out and you're happy with the way it is or made changes if you feel you need to you can just get rid of that effect you can either just turn the little FX button off to get rid of it or select it and hit the delete button and it's gone and now we know that that shots fairly well done but let's have a look at a couple more I've got uh, a couple more items to have a little look at so we've got some bars and tones now I've got NTSC bars and tones and power bars and tones. So let's look at the NTSC ones and have a little look at what we're looking at down here in the vector scope. Now you see over here we've got all the different colors and we've got brightnesses. Bear in mind it's not particularly interested in brightness, it's just interested in color. So we've got grays and those neutral grays will be represented in the middle. I'm now going to just bring this out a bit so you can see it a bit clearer. You can see that we've got little dots that are indicating the colors that we can see but also this is at 75 percent notice for instance over here on yellow that we've got one that goes out a lot further than broadcast safe if I drop that down to 100 percent you'll see that we've got colors that go out all the way to 100 percent and this is an excellent way of helping the system that you are sending your video out to somebody to be able to calibrate it if you add bars and tones at the beginning of your footage so this is the HD bars and tones at, it, at the beginning of your footage the people can bring it in and they can check with a vector scope that it's actually exactly the same on their vector scope as it is from your footage and you can see here we're bang on 75% and 100% for each one of these and even though the vector scope is set up for an NTSC system it's pretty good it's almost precisely the same for a PAL system so you can use the vector scope without any problems at all but if you do have a problem with items going way beyond 100% then we have to actually do some color correction to deal with those. There's one other thing I'd like to show you here is if I go back to the mage footage that I have from Adobe I've actually added a title and I'm just gonna turn on the title and you'll see that the title you can see it here right at the top it's a big red title and it goes way beyond in fact if we go to 100% you'll see it goes up to 100% so there's the safe point here at 75 and it finishes at 100 percent so I'm going to take it back to 75 because that's where it should be if you get this kind of thing that is pure red but we actually need to change it we need to dampen it down so that it can actually hit safe limits and that's again where we would use something like the fast color corrector to be able to pull it or tone it down so that we can see it's going to be safe and we're using the vector scope as our way of being able to check and make sure that what we produce is correct because your eyes will not be able to tell that well enough because eyes are very sensitive to luminance 
but they're not so sensitive to chrominance and that's why it's really important to have something like the vector scope when you're doing this kind of color correction to make sure that you end up with something that's safe. In the next tutorial we're going to have a very brief look at the RGB parade.